Boot Heels Podcast, episode number three. What are you telling yourself every day? Mm -hmm. Are you telling yourself, I'm a big, fat, horrible pig monster? Or are you telling yourself, (laughs) I am a successful, happy, beautiful being? What are you telling yourself? And it depends on the day. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat and stress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately. All right, welcome to the Food Heals Podcast, episode number three. Today, Susie had a great idea to turn the tables and interview each other so that you can hear our personal stories and why we are both so passionate about holistic health. We told you a little bit about our stories in episode zero, but now we're going to get deep. So I'm going to let Susie take it away in just a second. First up, Food Heals Nation, make sure you are following us on Twitter, connecting with us on Facebook and Instagram at Food Heals Nation. And don't forget, if you like our podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review. Remember, we still have the contest going on, so our favorite reviews will win swag bags featuring health and beauty products that we just can't live without. So to enter, all you have to do is leave us a ravishing, raving review on iTunes or Stitcher, and then take a screenshot of your review and send it to us so that we know that you reviewed us and that you want to enter. You can tweet it to us at Food Heals Nation, or you can post it to our Facebook wall, or you can email it to us at info at foodhealsnation.com. Today's show is sponsored by the Missing Maura Murray podcast. The show is hosted by Tim and Lance, who investigate the disappearance of a young girl who hasn't been seen since 2004. One of the hosts, Tim Polari, is a friend of the show, so I wanted to give him a shout out because his podcast is one of my favorites, and if you are as addicted to cereal as I was, you're going to love the Missing Maura Murray podcast as well. We'll tell you more about their show later in our show. Today's podcast is also sponsored by No Talks Life, which makes affordable organic skincare products with delicious ingredients such as coconut oil, mango butter, essential oils, and natural clays and minerals, and they simply don't believe in using ingredients they can't pronounce. Later in the show, we'll tell you how to get free shipping on your purchases from No Talks Life. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. So hi, this is Susie Hardy, and I'm here to, I want to, I want to get to the heart of why Allison is doing her podcast. Sure. Um, because I think it's really important. I think I, I know, but I want to know more. Our listeners will want to know, you know, what brought this all about. Yeah, I think there's a few reasons that could be attributed to, to starting this. The first thing that sparked the idea was I'm working on this film called Food Heals, And the film is stories of people who have healed themselves holistically through alternative medicine, through nutrition, through all kinds of different methods, um, without drugs, without surgery, without chemotherapy. Not that those things are bad. We're just trying to show an alternative approach and the power of nutrition and the power of the mind and the power of your emotions to create disease. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so the original idea was to put the interviews from the film into a podcast and do kind of a storytelling. So while we're editing this film, we can interview the people in it, but we can also interview all kinds of people who are in these holistic fields who are doing amazing things. I'm meeting people left and right who are like, I have a story to share. So I decided I want to share those stories. And I thought a podcast was a perfect way to do it. Yeah, it totally is. You know, there's so many people out there that not only don't have the information, and are also told by doctors, no, sorry, you're stuck. Right. You know, my friend w- that was diagnosed with MS was told when she said, what about nutrition? What, what should I be eating? What should I not be eating? Her doctor literally said, you could eat a pint of ice cream right now. It wouldn't make a difference. And <sighs> anyone who knows anything about nutrition and healing and health, no, that's not correct in any way, shape or form. Not at all. A pint of ice cream will not help anything except maybe PMS or breaking up with a boyfriend. You should never be just yes. chowing down on a pint of ice cream. Agreed. And, and thinking it's not going to affect your body. 
especially if you have healing to do, you know, like you said, if you're going through a breakup, more power to you. But if you have healing to do, if your body needs to heal, that is the last thing you need to put in your body. And I just feel for her so much because it's exactly what happened to me. The exact same story, different doctor, different Mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. But yeah, my mom, she had MS. Mm -hmm. She was on so many pills that the end of her life was just hourly checking off what pills had she taken to make sure that she was taking the right ones and they weren't going to interact because each one had a side effect and it was just insanity and there was no cure the doctors could not help her they would just put her on a different medication to try something new each week Mm -hmm. so then she was diagnosed with cancer well now i look back and go oh she was taking all these pharmaceutical drugs had no concern for diet no wonder she got sick yeah right yeah so when she was diagnosed with cancer I didn't know anything about nutrition at this time, but something inside of me said to the doctor, does nutrition matter? Like, what should we feed her? Because I was making her dinners. I was helping out around the house. You know, I was in college, so I had a lot of freedom and she was only living 30 minutes away from me at at the beach. So I had a lot of, um, you know, influence on her life. I was buying her lunches after class and just things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I said to the doctor, like, is there a certain diet that will help this? He said, no. Nutrition doesn't matter. So I'm 20, 20 years old, 19, 20. I said, okay, thank you, doctor. Thank you, Dr. God. I believe you. <laughs> Went home and we kept eating this absolutely poor diet, fast food, you know, sugar, dairy, meat, all these things. And I'm not saying that all those things are going to kill you, but they definitely, definitely don't help when you have cancer. No. You know, there's a lot of research showing that sugar feeds cancer. Mm -hmm. Dairy does create inflammation. Inflammation is the cause of disease. Yeah. So, you know, I had no idea. And when the doctor said that, I said, okay. And, you know, cut to years later, I started making these discoveries. But back then, I was just as naive as probably most 20-year-olds at that time. But there was was no Google at this time. Right probably dating myself, but um, I think I had AOL chat or something like that. But there was no Google. There was no way to research anything. Your doctor says this, you do it, and that's it. And that's Mm -hmm. how I was raised. That's how my father was. That's how my mother was. Take this pill and you'll be fine. Yeah. That's what I learned. Well, that's what we're told to do. And it took me a long time to make that discovery. Um, So she did pass away. Unfortunately, they gave her chemotherapy um, for a long time. And she lived probably... I can't remember the exact amount of time, maybe a year and a half after her cancer diagnosis. Wow. But she had long, beautiful hair. All her hair was gone. Mm-hmm. She was miserable. Mm-hmm. She was in pain. She was, I saw the absolute disintegration of the most beautiful woman. I mean, she was stunning. That had to be so hard. I mean, that's, and that's what it comes down to, right? That's why yeah. people, like, that's why people search out, at least now, other means, because when you're just told, take this pill and that's all you can do and you're watching your mom wither away and be and suffer you know now at least you're right now these people can go search and find chat rooms and blog posts and podcasts yeah (laughs) there's so much more information now and I remember she had passed away I was at the airport I was with my dad Um, we had just gone on some nice vacation ate tons of terrible food Um, I was happy that I was on vacation um, but I was feeling low energy, totally bloated, just feeling like shit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Probably had a lot of depression going on from losing my mom that I wasn't willing to deal with. Mm-hmm. So I just felt awful. And I picked up this book in an airport and it was all about detoxing the body. And I had never heard of anything like this. I thought a detox was what you did when you were an alcoholic and you right. went to rehab. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, that is a, that is something that it is, but it also had a, this whole other meaning that I wasn't aware of. And so I started reading it and all of a sudden I was like, this makes sense. All the questions I had, why? What is the cause? Why is this happening? Why did she get sick? What can we do to prevent this? What can we do to reverse this? Mm-hmm. Every question and answer was in this book. And I was floored and all of a sudden it was my wake up. And as soon as we got back to the States, I started reading every book I could get my hands on. I started telling my dad, you got to change your diet. Mm -hmm. And he would say, you're cute, right? (laughs) I'd I'd say, you got to stop smoking. He'd be like, okay. He'd stop smoking around me, smoke whenever I wasn't there. 
I'd say, you got to stop drinking. Well, he started drinking at 5 p.m. <laughs> every day. <laughs> Look, he had worked really hard his whole life, total entrepreneur, went bankrupt when I was in middle school, may, became a self-made millionaire by the time I was in college, after college, I think I just graduated around that time. He worked so hard his whole life. If he was going to drink and eat shitty food, that's what he was going to do. Yeah. And he was going to be happy about it. Yeah. And here I was, this little bubbly girl, his daughter, going, you should do this, and you should do this. And he's going, honey, I love you, but that ain't happening, right? Right. (laughs) And so I worked really hard on him for a while, gave up for a while, came back to read to something else or learn something else. I'd come back to it like, you know, I don't want you to get sick. But there was a part of me, and I I even hate to admit this because it's so freaking sad, but I knew he was going to get sick yeah. because of what had happened to my mother, because of the amount of pharmaceuticals he was on Mm -hmm. for everything that is, you know, I think it was like 55 or something, everything that an over 50 person's doctor puts them on. So he was taking tons of pharmaceuticals. He was eating a poor diet. Um, You know, it's the South. Southern food is delicious. But yeah, most of it ain't good for you, right? Yeah. Sweet tea and <laughs> yep. cornbread. And, yeah. Yep. And so, you know, I was seeing this before my eyes and going, oh, my God, he's going to get sick. And plus drinking and smoking, which was not my mother's problem. Like, yeah. I'm sure she drank once in a while. I, uh, I can't even remember her drinking ever. And I don't think it's something she hid from me or anything like that. Like, my dad clearly had a beer every day at 5 p.m., you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And my mom, I remember, I think I saw her smoke once or twice, but it was just for fun. It wasn't, she wasn't addicted. My right. father was addicted to, to smoking. Yes. And he finally, he, he actually quit cigarettes later in life, but then he, he moved to cigars. So then he s- smoked cigars like a cigarette, which I think is he was a inha- lot worse. It's worse. He yes. was inhaling a cigar. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's worse. But look, he was happy. Yeah. He, I mean, he wasn't happy, let's be honest, but this is some a small thing that made him happy. So who am I to take that away from him, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and God knows I tried. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> um, anyways, I... Um, decided to move to Los Angeles. And um, I had been once before, I had done an internship in New York and an internship in LA. Um, Fell in love with LA. I was, you know, I had gone to film school, so I always knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be, you know, what everyone wants to be out here, writer, actor, director, filmmaker, la la la. So moved out to LA, lived here for about three or four months, got the call. He said, it's bad, babe. Come home. Oh, no. And I said, is it cancer? He said, yes. And I was just like, this is the most horrible thing. But I was just like, I knew it. Yeah. And uh, I went on a rampage (laughs) of (laughs) trying to cleanse out his system. I went home. I teamed up with my stepmom. He did get remarried briefly. They had only been married for a couple months when he got diagnosed, unfortunately. Um, she was wonderful. Um, so we teamed up and we were like these two bubbly blondes that were in the kitchen every day juicing and making healthy food and giving him all this healthy stuff while he would sit out on the porch reading his newspaper, smoking his cigar. And we would come outside and he pretend he was asleep so he didn't have to drink our green concoction with garlic. <laughs> of course. You know, of course. So we came up with all these, you know, healthy. This one is healing the liver. Here's a because it was liver cancer. Yeah. So here's Just a liver one of the juice. Worst ones. Yeah. And it, and you go fast. He went a lot faster than my mom did, which is interesting. Um, hers was, I never said it, but they never found a cause. So they called it carcinoma of unknown origin, um, which at the time to me just meant they couldn't find the cause. So they didn't label it. It's not colon. It's not liver. It's not lung. It's just your body is riddled with cancer. So, wow. yeah, which now I would have asked so many more questions. But at the time I was like, whatever you say, I don't know anything. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we tried really hard. I would give him cleanse books. And and now at this point we have Google, we have, you know, internet, we have video, we have YouTube. I'm watching documentaries about this. I'm reading books about this. I'm just, you know, doing all the research that I can possibly do. And I am telling him everything I can tell him. We're working really hard to get him healthy. And he's just going... This isn't for me. Oh, my God. 
And one day, I'll never forget this day, he was very, very sick, um, but he was still trying. And every time we would try to give him a smoothie or something healthy, he would drink some of it to make us happy. And then he would pretend to fall asleep, kind of like I said before. And I was like, God, he's sleeping a lot. He's doing really bad. And it turns out, well, first he sat me down and he said, I know that you believe this. And I don't believe it. There we go. Yeah. And he said, and if I don't believe it, it's not going to work anyways. And I was like, you're right. So he said, please let me just die the way that I want to die. What, what does that mean? I want to smoke. Yeah, I want to drink. drink. <laughs> I want to have, he, he wanted to have parties. Oh, this guy was, he was a life of the party. Mm-hmm. He played pranks. He had people over. He cooked food. Like, I feel like I'm, I haven't even, you know, made him out to be the personality that he was. He was a, he was a quiet, funny, party, you know, successful, happy guy yeah. who had been through a lot of heartache in his life, lost his wife before that, lost his uh, brother, got run over, lost his mom. He had been through, his dad killed himself when he was little. He had been through so much more tragedy than most people. Yeah. And somehow he was still surviving. So, you know, he sat me down and he said, this is how I want to live and this is how I want to die. And I need you to respect that. The hardest thing I ever did was say, okay. And I remember sitting there with him for eternity. It was so long I sat there and my mind was going, no, fight him. Tell him this. Tell him you're going to cure him. Tell him to go to this doctor and blah, blah, blah. And I had to quiet my mind and just go, you need to accept his decision. Yeah. And I finally did. And I walked away and I said, okay. And then he died a couple months after that. Wow. But he was happy. I'm pretty sure he was smoking a cigar <laughs> on his deathbed. I'm not kidding. We had people over that night, and I couldn't even believe it happened that night. But, uh, yeah, he... Uh, God, he, that had to be so hard to just let it go and let him... Because it is his body. I have nightmares about it, and I, I, I blame myself, and I say, why didn't I do this, and why didn't I try harder? And there's a lot of guilt associated with both of my parents, and mm-hmm. so I've done a lot of healing work on that. But, you know, it's still there. Yeah. It takes a long time to, you know, let go of all these judgments that you have about situations, about oh, yourself, course. about people. And I work on it, but it's, you know, it's a journey. It's, it's, it's always there. Yeah. But it led you to here. Yeah. I mean, my life's mission is to help people get healthy because, you know, what I haven't told you about on the podcast is just when I moved to LA, I was attracting people left and right that were telling me their story well I took a a woman's pregnancy photo she hired me and we were riding in the car to Malibu we had this long drive ahead of us from like East Hollywood we're riding the car to Malibu and she's like oh well I had cancer and I was like oh my gosh she's like I was like well you look wonderful she's like yeah I healed it myself I did a cleanse I was like oh my god So she told me her whole story of having ovarian cancer and having very large tumors covering her ovaries. And the doctor said, we're going to do a surgery. And after the surgery, you may be barren. You may not have children, but you won't have cancer. And she said, F you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm having kids. Um, So she said, I'm going to take four months and I'm going to try to get rid of this cancer myself. And And if I don't, I'll come back. And uh, you can do your surgery. Yeah. In four months, she did a cleanse. She ate only fruits and vegetables. She drank only healing juice. She cut out, you know, meat, dairy, Mm -hmm. sugar, anything toxic. But besides diet, she also cleansed her, I don't know how to say this, her emotional toxicity. Mm -hmm. She was in a toxic marriage. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, she was miserable she felt unsupported, unhappy in this marriage. So during that time, she also got a divorce. Wow. Yeah. So she changed her. Yeah. It's a, it's a huge deal. Yeah. So changing her diet, changing her relationship healed her. She goes back to the doctors after less than four months and the tumors had shrunk so significantly. They were barely there. And the doctor was like, maybe you didn't have cancer in the first place. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? I love when they say that. <laughs> yeah. And she was so excited to go back and tell them, like, tell your patients. They've got to do this. And they were like, that couldn't have been it. It must have been something else. Of course. Yeah. So 
Now, when I met her, I was taking her pregnancy photos. So thank mm-hmm. God mm-hmm. she didn't have, you know, a surgery that may have left her barren. Yeah. Now, I know sometimes surgery is necessary, but sometimes it's not. Yeah. And you have to be educated and you have to learn and you have to decide what's right for you. What can you, what else can you do? We, we have, There's some statistic I heard, I wish I had remembered it, but there's some statistic that I had heard recently where we have the highest number of surgeries in the world. Really? I bet. That's what, you know, if we can cut it out, we will. Um, and we're not, we're not any healthier. We spend more on healthcare. Yeah. What are we, number 50 or something? Number 42 in the world? I know. Cuba's healthier than we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they smoke cigars and drink Cuba, get rum and Cuba Libres and, Yeah. Well, you know, it's like there's so much to be said for the emotional state of the person, too, because if you're happy, if you're so happy doing some of your vices, as long as you're not doing all the vices, I think you'll be just fine. But it's just this combination of diet and emotion. It's mind, body, spirit, right? Yeah, exactly. What is your belief system? You know, this is not a religious question whatsoever. Like, do you believe in something bigger? Do you believe that you are loved? Do you believe Mm -hmm. that you are taken care of? Do you believe that you are not judged? Mm -hmm. Do you judge yourself? What Mm -hmm. are you telling yourself every day? Mm -hmm. Are you telling yourself, I'm a big, fat, horrible pig monster? Or are you telling yourself... (laughs) I am a successful, happy, joyful, beautiful being. What are you telling yourself? And I'm guilty of both. Sometimes I'm a fat, ugly being, and sometimes I'm a beautiful, successful woman. It depends on the day. You're a human. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But it's what are we telling ourselves most of the time? Yeah. You know? And I think a lot of people have tapes running they're not even aware of and make assumptions Mm -hmm. or there's things that they have learned, acquired, absorbed, just taken as fact. Right. Particularly about themselves. I suffer from this. this is a ba- I've done a lot of work on myself. Mm-hmm. I'm still in progress. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to turn the tables and talk about Susie in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are not even aware of what's ru- myself included. This has been one of the, I think I think I'm at the a point for myself where if I can really do that, um, I can really be aware of the thoughts that I'm telling myself in the back of my mind. Thank God health has never been one of them. Mm-hmm. My story is a little different from yours. I was always aware of nutrition. My mom literally forced vitamins down my throat. But that's but, awesome. <laughs> but yeah, but um, what wasn't what I did learn or or absorb from my family was this kind of constant negativity. I even think it's part of um, my background, my makeup. My parents are from you know Eastern Europe, and there's mm-hmm. a heaviness in that culture. Mm. don't get me wrong I, there's a lot of about it that i appreciate um but there is a heaviness in slavic and eastern europe culture a lot of negativity mm-hmm. where it's almost always waiting for the other shoe to drop and even though i was raised in a happy environment i still took that on yeah so carry that with me like a backpack there's so much that we take on from our parents yeah. that you know, it's great that you're actually aware of it because so many people are not aware of what they got from their parents. Even if their parents were wonderful people, it doesn't matter. You can take on some of that negativity, some of their history, some of their past. So yeah. I think the most important thing is the fact that you're aware of it and therefore you have the power to transcend it. Yeah. You know, perception is reality. Yeah. So everything that we believe is our reality, whether it's true or not. Yeah. So well, it's self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Absolutely. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to the Food Heals Podcast, where you'll find the tools to become a hotter, healthier, happier you. We'll be right back with Allison Melody and Susie Hardy. Food Heals Nation, we are always on the lookout for products that are non-toxic, organic, and vegan, and also affordable. And that's why I am so excited to tell you about one of my new favorite discoveries, No Tox Life. No Tox Life is a family-run business, and each product is handmade by Sandy, the founder, and her daughter, Callie. These two make skincare products with luscious ingredients such as coconut oil, mango butter, essential oils, and natural clays and minerals. And they simply don't believe in using ingredients they can't pronounce. My favorite product is their Orange Mocha Espresso Body Bar, which only costs $11. And I can't get enough of their Vegan Mint Butter Lip Balm, which is only $4. Their products smell amazing, are the lowest prices I have seen, and are absolutely beautiful, so they make great gifts, too. No Tox Life has a special offer exclusive to Food Heals listeners. Order now using the coupon code FOODHEALS. 
all one word, for free shipping on your purchase of $35 or more. Check them out at NoToxLife.com. Food Heals Nation, do you love listening to podcasts as much as I do? If you're listening to this show, you probably do. Last year, I was completely addicted to cereal. I love tuning in each week to find out what Sarah Koenig was going to tell us next. It was such a great show to discuss with friends, and I miss it now that it's over. But luckily, I found the next great mystery podcast. Friend of Food Heals and fellow filmmaker Tim Polari is hosting the Missing Maura Murray podcast, and it is completely addictive. It's the story of Maura Murray, a 21-year-old college student who disappeared in 2004, and the case remains unsolved to this day. So many questions arise. Did it have something to do with a car accident? What about her unstable sister? Was Maura secretly living a life of crime? Tim and Lance want to find out. I'll let them fill you in on the details surrounding her disappearance, but trust me, you will be hooked. I hope that by bringing attention to this story, Tim and Lance will be able to uncover details previously unknown and help Maura's family get some closure. So check out the Missing Maura Murray podcast on iTunes. If you like a good mystery, you won't be disappointed. And who knows, maybe you know something that could help solve the unsolved case of Maura Murray. You are listening to the Food Hills Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. Okay, I'm going to turn the tables now. All right, flip them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listeners, we're so excited, Food Heals Nation, for you to hear more about our podcast producer, Susie. So, Susie, what got you into the field of holistic health? And I know you're a massage therapist, and I know mm-hmm. you just mentioned a little bit about your family, but re- what... What started it and what has had you continue it throughout your life? So my uh, story began when I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. I was a cheerleader. As was I. (laughs) (laughs) Fun cheerleader. (laughs) And uh, I was one of the bigger girls on the squad, taller. Mm -hmm. I wasn't fat, but I was was taller than – and I'm only 5'7". So, I mean, I guess it's – most of the girls were little. So I would have to be on the bottoms of whenever we put a girl up at, like, games and things like that. Yeah. We were at a practice. And, um, this one girl who was very, very, like she was actually tiny for her Mm -hmm. age. She was very, very petite and short, but I I don't know how she did this, but, um, you have to actually lean in when you're a base, which is what is on the bottom. You actually have to kind of lean in like two sides of a triangle. And then she's like the top of the triangle. And then you lift her above your head and it's supposed to take the pressure off your back. Well, I don't know how she did this, but we put her up and then she went into a split. So it forced my arms that were, I was leaning forward, forced them. Listeners, you can't see this, but I'm actually doing the, the motion. <laughs> She's lifting her arms from 30 degrees. It's or like, what is that? Like superwoman. <laughs> and then they were forced back over beyond my head where it hmm. arched my back. Um, wasn't terribly painful, but it definitely tweaked my back and hmm. I knew something was wrong. Um, but it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't a nine out of 10 pain. It was probably like three and a half. I knew something was wrong, but I was young. I right. Was like, okay. How old were you? Uh, I was 16. Okay. Is that right? Yeah, I was 16. And, you know, I went home, took some Advil, took a hot bath or shower or whatever. And, and slowly, very slowly, I'm talking over like three to four months, um, I, I would feel it. It was just a muscular thing. I would feel it in my back and I just didn't know what to do. And it's, and it was just, it, it had been, um, it was a sprain or a strain. I was, I should know this. I'm a massage therapist, but I forget that we probably mm. a sprain. Okay. The muscle had been torqued. Mm. And over time, what happens with muscles is that if they're tight, spasmed, if they're out of joint, if they're, you know, imbalanced, they, they get tight, they lock up to protect themselves, and then they pull on whatever is above and below them. So it got tighter and tighter and tighter, and then it would make everything above and below it tighter and tighter. So it went up mm. my back and down my legs. I got sciatica, and I couldn't <clears> – <throat> four months later, I couldn't get up out of a chair. I was like an old woman. I had to push. I had no core strength anymore. Mm. I was just in pain. That sounds awful. It was horrible, and it gave me um, – I, whenever someone tells me they have back pain, I'm, I just go, I, I'm so sorry. I understand. Yeah. I understood it from a young age. Usually 16 year olds don't have right. the back pain that 60 year olds have. Right. So, um, I went to the doctor, went to the chiropractor, doctor wanted to give me pain meds. He just, he didn't, you know, he's like, here you go. Here's a prescription. Um, chiropractor cracked me. And at the time, and this was in the nineties, the chiropractor didn't have a massage therapist. Now they do. Now they usually do. 
Um, but he cracked me, mm. gave me a lectrostim. It wasn't enough. It needed some more. It needed, needed physical manipulation, needed body work, massage and acupuncture. Okay. And it was horrible. And in a last ditch effort, I was in so much pain. I went to see an acupuncturist. My cousin was on, on the football team. Mm-hmm. And he injured his hand. And he happened to have a, a kid on his team whose mother was a, Chi- a Chinese acupuncturist from China. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we, I knew nothing about it. I was like, sure, I'll try it at this point, anything. I went. She healed me within three weeks. That's amazing. And the first, the very, yeah. And the very, especially since after four months of other tr- more traditional yeah. therapies, I was getting worse. And so the very first time that I went to see her, it actually got worse because what she did when you put acup I don't know how much you know about acupuncture, mm-hmm. but when you put in the needles, it's meant to unlock uh, sort of way stations of energy, trapped, blocked energy sure. that will then flood. Yes. But it, what it actually did was, it's called a healing crisis when yep. something actually gets worse and then it gets better. And this was in New York in the winter. And I actually, when I walked out to the car, I actually fell because my muscles that had been locked up for so long wow. were now like, we're alive and awake, but <laughs> oh my God, this hurts. There's still a lot of work to be done. And I yes. actually, I remember falling on the ice, but even thinking like, at least I feel something different. I don't feel the same. Mm-hmm. It's some, something moved, something changed. I kept going, I had to go three times a week. Um, and within three weeks, I was completely back to normal. And so that experience <clears throat> firsthand, and then also having tried all these other things with doctor, chiropractor telling me there's nothing we can do. And really, really, it just needed to be massaged. My back needed to be <laughs> by someone who knew what they were doing. Yeah. Acupuncture was a much faster way of healing what had become like a Leviathan. But um, after that, I was just kind of like, wow, I don't have to accept if I go to a doctor or I go to a practitioner, I, if something doesn't, if it's not enough, if it doesn't feel right, I don't have to just accept it. I can keep looking Yes, because I know I was 16. I was not about just to be like, well, I guess I'm just on pain meds for the rest of my life. That was absolutely thank God. Yeah. Um, because I was really crippled. I mean, I could not get up out of, I remember when I, that moment happened, I was like, what is wrong here? I didn't even have, it wasn't a car accident. Mm-hmm. I was in a cheerleading practice. Kind of funny to me now, but um, so that experience kind of opened me up to all different types of healing. And then when I went to college, um, it was a weak point in my body. And so I would have to continue if I got stressed, if I didn't stretch enough, um, if I didn't take care of my back, it would go out on me. So I'd have to go back to acupuncture. Mm -hmm. And I went to an acupuncturist in college and I remember going and I had a midterm coming up and I was coming down with a cold. I was kind of stressed out. I was going there for my back, and he was asking me how I was feeling, and I told him, I said, I think I'm coming down with a cold. He's like, turn over. I'll, I'll make your cold go away. Because that when you do the, the back versus the front, it treats different things right. in acupuncture. And I said, what? And he said, yeah. So I turned over, and my cold went away in like a couple of days. Like what, what was felt like I could have gotten way worse right. went away. Incredible. Now, that coupled with when I was a kid – my mom uh, was very much into nutrition. She, was, she knew about vegetables and fruits. We grew fruits in our backyard, and, and we had a garden. Um, and we also took supplements. My grandfather in the 50s was an immigrant, and he happened to be a security guard at Solgar Vitamins uh, mm. for the building in Manhattan. Cool. So he sometimes they would have boxes of vitamins just as product samples, or whatever, and they would give them. He got them for free. He would come home with boxes and boxes of vitamin C and multivitamins and chelated solomons. Oh and, my gosh! And at the time, my mom uh, was also an immigrant, born in Europe, and at the time they had just discovered Coca Cola, and she was drinking Coca Cola like crazy because it was so <laughs> good, and her skin started to break out. And my grandfather started bringing home these vitamins, and she went to him and said, that, "Look at my skin," and he's like, "Okay, stop drinking the Coke." And take some vitamins. Mm-hmm. I don't know how he knew that because he was not a terribly educated man, but he believed in them. I mean, he read enough about science. He always fancied himself kind of a scientist. He always called himself a scientist, even though he never went to college. <laughs> he, was a, he was a shoemaker in Slovakia. That's awesome. But he he liked reading about science and nutrition. And, um, and so he gave them vitamins. And I don't remember how long, but it was within stopping the Coke and taking supplements. Her skin cleared up. Wow. So then when I was a kid, oh, when she was pregnant with me, she went to the doctor and said, what supplements should I be taking for my baby? And the doctor said, I don't know. You know more than I do. Oh, my gosh. That's so true. Because she would read about it. She yeah. knew about folic acid to prevent spina bifida. She knew that you had to take extra 
everything, right? Yeah. Because you have a, another human. Um, so then when I was little, we had liquid vitamin C, which was actually very tasty. We had liquid vitamin B, which was repulsive. <laughs> oh, no. So disgusting. It's hard to get a kid to do anything that's not delicious. We would had no choice. Mm. We had a Eastern European parents, and, and that was something we knew. Like, that's, that's just what we do. We take our vitamins. Good for um, your parents. And then she would grind up these minerals and put them in yogurt. So we had this crunchy mineral yogurt, which was pretty – because before I could swallow a pill. And then we had liquid vitamin E, which is also pretty gross. But that laid the groundwork. Wow. And that was also just a hobby of my mom's. Like she, you know, we would go with them to the, the, what did they, they called the health food store, but a supplement store, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, I remember getting like whole wheat pretzels and like snacks from there, like, you know, carob instead of chocolate, you get like carob raisins or whatever, things like that. So that was always, um, just part of our family cult, like family culture, you know, mm -hmm. I went, when I went away to college, I would, they would send me vitamins. So, um, so I was kind of lucky that way. And then those two, so those two things together. Um, what an amazing way to grow up. You know, it's like these things that are going on now are the same thing. Like someone might be drinking a Coke every day mm -hmm. and all they need to do to heal half of their problems is get rid of the Coke and take some vitamins, yeah. you know? And yeah. the fact that your parents were, you know, so advanced at that time, because even now, a lot of people are doing it, but a lot of people still aren't. So, or they'll give their kids like you know gummy vitamins, which are more of a candy. So those two things coupled together, and then uh, just other experiences thereafter, where I would have doctors uh, and a dentist. Oh, that's a big one. I don't know if we <laughs> want to talk about that today. Your dentist with the screenplay. My dentist with the screenplay <laughs> in Los Angeles. <laughs> if you live in LA, everyone you meet has a screenplay. If they don't, they're gonna leave soon. Yeah. Or they're going to start writing one. They're going to start writing Because my dentist yes. had a screenplay. Or they have an agent or, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd always had, knock on wood, I'd always had pretty good teeth. Um, my parents being immigrants and having gone through the whole Coke fiasco and not, and having immigrant parents didn't really take care of their teeth and had have a lot of dental work. And they would always say, take care of your teeth. They would scare the crap out of us. And mm -hmm. I really took it to heart. Yeah. I don't know if it affected my brother as much, but I did not want to have dental work if I didn't want to. And I, and I knew that, and usually had no cavities when I went to college, started eating worse mm -hmm. as most freshmen do. Yeah. I started to get a couple of cavities here and there, but, um, but my home, my home dentist would always show me the x-rays and show me where the, the cavity was. And, you know, he would just, he would educate me. So cut to here years later, living out in Los Angeles, moved here also for film and TV. As we all do. Yeah. <laughs> and I had no problems. was just going for a cleaning. And he took x-rays and he said, oh, you know, came in worried. And he said, I, we have to drill two teeth. And I was like shocked because, A, I had no pain. And I know you can have cavities without pain, but I didn't feel like I had a problem. It felt unnecessary. It felt unnecessary. And I could tell like, though, yeah, I felt like he was playing me. I was just like, he was just like selling mm. it really hard. And I was like, okay, let me, let me see the x-rays. He brought them in. There was nothing. And, and, and x-rays for teeth are not brain surgery. Like, you don't need a doctorate to see them right. or a special loop. It's a black dot. <laughs> That's it. It's that simple. There were no black dots. Oh, my God. And, he's, and he was trying to tell me it, it takes a trained eye. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to wait. I'm going to yeah. hold off. Get a second opinion. Yeah. Third I'm like, opinion. I'm going to wait on that. Yeah. And, um, and at the time, I was in massage school. So, mm -hmm. what you know, waiting for my break, I decided to go to massage uh, therapy school and have that as my side business. I had always um, been kind of fascinated by that because it healed me. Yeah. Um, and it just seemed really interesting to me. And then thereafter, like also learning about energy work, you know, that opened up a whole other array of mm -hmm. possibilities. That was also kind of fascinating to me because acupuncture is also energy work. And I knew that that I had personal experience that that worked. And I thought, yeah. I want to know more about that. I didn't want to go acupuncture is three full years. I didn't mm -hmm. want to go do that, but um, I got off topic. So anyway, so dentist. So I went home. I was in massage therapy school. I was in a pathology or no, I'm sorry. I was in an anatomy class at the time. And I knew that teeth were like bones mm -hmm. where bones if you break a bone they just set it straight and let your body heal itself right mm -hmm. yep. so body does the work my new teeth were mostly like bones they're a little different setup wise but i thought well why can't teeth heal themselves why do i have to pay a lot of money and have pain 
and set up the potential for later problems. Because once you have a cavity, once they drill, it just later, it just gets worse. Yeah. In general. And so I did a lot of research and I came across this website about a holistic dentist in upstate New York in the 1980s called Dr. Nara. Mm -hmm. And he had practiced holistic dentistry and he had retired. He had been literally driven out of the business, but he taught people how to, if if they had a cavity or a problem, how to naturally fix their teeth. Amazing. Um, Mostly with baking soda tooth powder. Yep. And alkalinity versus acidity in your mouth. And that if you provided your mouth through your teeth, if you had a problem, a cavity, uh, if you provided the environment for your mouth, for your teeth to heal themselves, they would. So that was all I needed. That was, I just needed the, like the other perspective. And I was like, I'm on board with this. And I bought, he had two eBooks and I bought his eBooks. Um, good for you. They sell baking soda tooth powder at Whole Foods. You can make your own for pennies. I yep. tried that. It's not as nice as the one from Whole Foods. But they have other ones too. There's all different types of tooth powder. Tooth powders have been around forever. So that coupled with um, this antimicrobial rinse that I used just to make sure – and flossing. Like I, uh-huh. I just was like, I don't – I'm not buying into this. And his whole – one of his eBooks was called Money by the Mouthful, you know, Why Dentists Basically Drive Mercedes. It's because they need to drill your teeth and charge you a lot of money. I have chills because I've had similar experiences and I went through something similar. And I I hate to think badly because I've had really great, honest, loving dentists. So I'm not knocking dentistry here because some of them I don't think know what your dent the the guy that you found knew and figured out. And um I do the same thing. Mm-hmm. I use baking powder. I do oil pulling. Do you yep. do oil pulling? I haven't done it, but I know what it is. So Food Heals Nation, if you take anything from this podcast today, switch up your toothpaste immediately and get any of those mercury fillings removed. Okay. That's Super another important. thing. To go full circle from the beginning of this, there is an abundance of research and evidence that shows that these mercury fillings cause autoimmune disease. Well, guess whose mouth was full of mercury fillings? My mother's and my father's. Oh, no. They had so much dental work. I think they came around, came up at a time when dentistry got so popular. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, But both of them had so many fillings. And when I was growing up, they said, take care of your teeth so you don't have to deal with the pain that we went through. And I don't know how much of it was completely unnecessary, Susie. I will never know if it was a situation similar to yours, but no education regarding how to take care of your teeth and the fact that, like you said, bones heal themselves. And we are so brainwashed against this. Yeah. You go to the dentist, they give you a filling. Now, fillings are less toxic than they used to be. I will give them that. However, how many times is it unnecessary? And when mm-hmm. is it actually necessary? Well, that's the thing too, is that like, okay, so so for your tooth to heal itself, uh, you have to have enough calcium in your mouth. It's mm-hmm. a sp- sp- specific setup of calcium uh you know chain of calcium i forget what it's calcium carbonate or whatever but you have to have that in your mouth and you you have to have i think your mouth has to be alkaline enough for you for to pull in from your saliva and patch it up like like spackle um so it was really hard for i mean it was it was okay for me and i don't have children yet so i don't know what i'm going to do when i have them because (laughs) there's a lot of fear around it right like but if this, especially if the cavity is small enough, even if it isn't, if you take immediate steps to revert it, and at the very least just use baking soda, you know, tooth powder, baking soda based, even the, even the toothpaste that are baking soda based are not enough. You really need that powder to change the alkaline in your mouth. Yes. Your, your mouth can immediately go, oh, okay. Oh, there's some calcium. Patch it up. Yes. Now let's fix this. So yeah, you'll never, you'll never really know. I just know that from my experience. And baking soda is also very, very healing. Um, I get emails all the time because of my website, Holistic Voice, where I say, if you want to share a story, send me your story. And a woman sent me her story about how she reduced her tumor size by eating, like ingesting baking soda. Baking soda has a lot of healing properties. The other thing that's really important for the teeth, every time I've ever done a cleanse, I really pay attention to this. And I try to do it 
more regularly, but I definitely don't do it every day or anything, is oil pulling. Yeah. Okay, so what does that do? It pulls out all the toxins that are sitting there that your floss doesn't get to, that your toothbrush doesn't get to. Not sure if the baking soda gets to it, but anytime I'm cleansing, I do a lot of that because when you're cleansing, you're taking out the toxins. So you want to just switch this oil. You can you can buy special oils. Like they have Ayurvedic ale, uh, mm-hmm. oils that you can buy, mm-hmm. but I do it with coconut oil. Do you really? Yes. You just put it in your mouth, swish it around, and spit it out. You're supposed to swish it for 20 minutes. You guys, it gets disgusting after a few minutes. And I realize that means that I'm toxic and a lot has to come out. Oh, so, I should you know, do that. Sorry, oh. I hope I'm not grossing anyone no, out. No, I'm just thinking. <laughs> if you want to heal, oh my gosh. And then the third recommendation I have for you, for the mouth especially, is a tongue scraper. Mm-hmm. So I went on a, a cleanse retreat about four years ago. And I was learning all this stuff. And in, you get a care package that you, you know, when you do the cleanse, it's in Palm Springs. It's wonderful. Cleansing with Jan. I can put the um, link in the show notes. But she gives you a tongue scraper. And I'll never forget what she said. She said, if you finish this cleanse and you don't adopt any of the things you've learned, the number one thing I want you to do is use the tongue scraper on a regular basis. I told my husband about that. He was my boyfriend back then, but this is four years ago. He's been using the tongue scraper ever since, more regularly than I am. He brings it on vacation. He's obsessed with it. He does it three times a day. You just scrape from the back of the mouth to the front. He has not been sick once. He does not get sick, and he is not as nutritiously healthy as me. He's not a vegan. You know, I didn't know that affected the rest of your body. I thought that was just for your mouth. It's a really, really powerful tool for keeping bacteria from going down. So think about every time you're opening your mouth, bacteria can be coming in, you know, germs can be coming Mm -hmm. in, everything we hear about. Usually you think about your hands, maybe it's your hands, touch your mouth, blah, blah, blah. So at the end of the day, and he does it probably two to three times a day, you're scraping from the back to the front. So you get everything that's accumulated throughout the day and you get it out of there. And a lot of people say, oh, you can just do it with your toothbrush. But I was told on the cleansing retreat, you can't because what the toothbrush does because of the bristles is it grinds in, you know, whatever you're trying to get out, it grinds it in and the scraper scrapes it out. So that's Mm -hmm. just what I was told. I, I pretty much believe it. And it's been, he's like a testimonial to that and you have to get a tongue scraper i know everyone food heals nation go get your tongue scraper go get some coconut oil and you know when you go to the dentist get a second opinion get a third get a fourth get some baking soda you know if you're not ready to switch out if you love your toothpaste put baking soda on top of your toothpaste at least that will help you know i tried my husband um even though i helped him he has started having a toothache Mm. and i have this like oral rinsing system yeah that uh, I use this highly, like, that also is from, from the website that continues Dr. Nara's work. So they sell all the kind the products, and they're not that, you know, comparatively compared to dental surgery mm-hmm. and root canals and all that kind of stuff. Not expensive. And and I actually helped him. I gave him, you know, he's starting to have a pain. I said, okay, do this and try this. And it went away. Amazing. So, <clears throat> whatever I pain it. he was having. Yeah. It went away. And then, of course, he loves his toothpaste. He loves his Aquafresh or whatever the heck he uses. And mm-hmm. I said, honey... I know you like the taste. I get it too. Because baking soda tooth powder is, is like salty. It's yeah. a very different taste. I love it. If I don't have it, I go crazy. If I don't have it twice a day, I, I, go, I go nuts. Yeah. So, but, but toothpaste is actually just a detergent. It's just sudsy and minty and got a little sucralose or whatever they use to sweeten it. It tastes great. You know, makes you feel minty. But it makes it, you feel clean. But what is it actually cleaning? It's not cleaning anything. And a friend of mine that I actually turned on to the tooth powder was like, my teeth feel cleaner. Yeah. So it's actually it. like micro polishing, and and also hardening of the enamel. I I don't remember the science science behind that, but the baking soda actually helps reharden your enamel. So amazing, yeah. Well, Food Heals Nation, we didn't know we were going to get into all of this dental information today, but we would love to share this, um, the links with you and the resources that both Susie and I use. So we will definitely put those in the show notes. And Allison, I want to thank you for sharing your story. And thank you for sharing yours. Thanks for turning the tables and interviewing me. It was really fun. Of course. My pleasure. Okay. Until next time. That's our show. Thanks for listening. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Food Heals Nation. You can find all of the show notes at foodhealsnation.com. And today's tweetable comes from you, Allison. Everything we believe is our reality. 
Once we are aware, we then have the power to transcend it. I love that. Thanks. If you like it, tweet it back to us. Make sure to tag us in your post at Food Heals Nation. And don't forget, we still have the swag bag contest going on. So it's really easy to enter to win a gift bag full of our favorite luscious, organic, vegan health and beauty products valued at over $300. All you have to do is leave us a raving review on iTunes and tweet us a screenshot of that review. If you don't have Twitter, you can post your screenshot to our Facebook page or you can email it to info at foodhealsnation.com. Our next podcast is a very special episode with a surprise guest. Yep. Who we know you will love. You will love him. He is a filmmaker who completely changed his life, lost 100 pounds, got rid of his autoimmune condition all by juicing and adopting a plant-based diet. He's amazing. So stay tuned for next time. And in the meantime, remember Food Heals Nation, today is the first day of the rest of your life and only you can decide what to do with it. That's right. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately.